Hello again and welcome to The Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Please check the drop down menu below so that you can find out what today's video is about. You'll also find links to the other channels that have the same name, The Master's Voice End Times Prophecy Blog on Rumble, Bitchute, and Brighteon. You're welcome to recommend those channels to friends of yours who may not use YouTube for whatever reasons. You can also follow the videos there. You can share from there as well as from here. Please give a like so that it helps the algorithm share these videos more widely. And without further ado, thank you for being here and let's start today prophetic message. Today's message is continuing in the supernatural series, God wanting us to look deeper into things that directly affect safety, sanity, and keeping a pure spiritual and natural line in the end times. So one of the big topics that's going to really hit the headlines in the end times is the matter of cloning, the matter of hybridism, the matter of transhumanism. Right now, we're sort of at the starter end of these things. So what you only pick up is tiny little headlines in maybe science journals and tiny little news features that aren't really in the public eye. But God is the author of prophecy. And what prophecy does is prophecy is looking ahead to see what things will be. This is the mind of God opened up and revealed to people, not only God's people, though the church is first and foremost on the father's mind in prophecy, but God is revealing to mankind what things will be. It's extremely important for us as people to understand that the time that God has given us to rule, the time that God has given us to have dominion, the time that God has given humanity as a race, as a group, to have ascendancy is rapidly coming to a close. We are coming to the time spoken of in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12, what it says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come down to you. The Lord has given me this phrase countless times in prophecy, celestial, take heed to yourselves because the devil, the devil has come down to you. So what does it mean when the devil comes down to us? If we are only at the beginning of times of cloning, times of hybridism, times of transhumanism, and when I say the beginning, I do not mean that these things are starting. I mean that those who have, whether we like it or not, legal charge over us, as in leaders and governments and rulers, and people who are sitting in the high seat, at least for now, are finally beginning to tease the beginning of their brave new world, a world in which they envisage that human beings no longer need to die. We will be able to cheat death. We will be able to cheat God and his horrible laws that require us to age and cheat God and his flawed design. If God really loves us, why would God let us get sick? If God really cares about us, why would God allow this and that? I've shared and I will continue to share boldly in the name of Jesus Christ that all these questions stand from pride. These are the outworkings of a prideful heart, a heart like, that like the builders of the Tower of Babel wanted to exalt itself above God's design, above God's law, above God's just punishment that he gave to Adam and Eve when he said, well, because you know, you've done this and all that you're being put out of the garden and you're not going to live forever anymore. So that was the first punishment that man will now die and return to the soil from which he came. That is the punishment for sin that we justly deserve. But in the end times, workers of iniquity, sons and daughters of Belial, as well as the star Belial himself, Satan, in other words, will come up to the point of transcendency, will try to exalt themselves to the stars of heaven, will try to to say, well, God had it wrong. God made a mistake. He didn't really mean that you have to die. We have solved dying. We have solved aging. We have even solved being a man if you were born one. We have so many new exciting promos and things to show you. And God has revealed that because in Satan's heart, 
there is pride. And in the heart of humanity, there is an equal and an opposite pride. And so there will be this perverse attraction between the wicked of a supernatural nature, which is Satan and the demons and the fallen angels and the Nephilim and the coming of angels and other creatures to the forefront of human history. If human ascendancy is ending, then that means as our star is dimming, as our star um, of being the central rulers of this planet is falling down, then Revelation 12, 12, the devil who will come down to you is going to rise and seize his 15 minutes of fame, 15 minutes of very aggressive and deadly fame, because the Lord has said that the devil knows he has a short time and Satan being extremely wicked and diabolical is not going to mix, miss or mess up one second of that. So today's prophecy is looking at humanoids, which means having a human shape, but not human. Humanoids and Serpent People, July 6, 2021. And the overall banner for this was just Alien. I put it in the Alien series. I'm not yet finished with the Alien series. I still have quite a few dreams to share. So I was spending time reading my Bible that night and the voice of the Lord kept speaking to me and saying they have to be exposed. They have to be exposed. So that's what pushed me to put this prophecy on the blog. I went through a phase last year where the Lord shifted sharply from natural prophecies. So we're talking about wars and rumors of wars and um, unrest and natural disasters, excuse me, please, things of that nature, and began to push me into the supernatural, saying, you have to expose these things, Celestial. You have to share these things. These things have been in my archives for years. They are not my favorite thing to talk about. And so I was not writing about them. I just had the information. And God said, you have to expose them. And so I started doing it. And so when I woke up that morning, July 6th or July 16th, whatever date I gave here, um, as soon as I opened my eyes in that sleepy state, the Lord said to me, hollowed out, plasticine, robotoid people, meaning basically robot people. Then he said, empty shells, no wires, full of hardware, metal chips, not people. Serpents among men, false humans, serpents mixed with human flesh, not people. And then right after that, I saw human-like shapes, like dolls, sitting in a row in a factory or a warehouse. They were either sitting on a bench or they were just in a long row seated, and they had a lot of wires and tubes coming from their heads. And what stuck out is a large tube coming out of the mouth and a large tube coming out of the head, both white. And all these wires and tubes coming out of all these male and female dolls, they were predominantly male, male shaped, human shaped dolls sitting in a row. But I have to tell you, these dolls were not synthetic doll like they had the same type of consistency that we have for flesh except that they were not alive their eyes were staring straight forward blankly and they were already dressed in business suits however they were blank just the way a brand new computer is blank it doesn't have anything on it except the basic software it doesn't have passwords it doesn't have your information nothing on it personalizes that laptop that's how empty they were they were staring straight ahead and they were completely bald. So they had not yet grown heads, um, grown hair. And so they just had these white tube on the head and a tube, a big tube in the mouth. And then these other wires going up from each doll. Now these wires following with my eyes went up to the ceiling of the building. And there was a large disc like object attached to the ceiling and it was glowing. So it was silvery, but at the same time, it was also full of light, sort of the bright white fluorescent light that you use in the kitchen rather than in the lounge space. And all the wires went into that large disc that was attached to the ceiling and that disc was keeping them alive. Now there's pictures in this post. So I would recommend always go back to the blog and read the prophecy for yourself. Your understanding will be better. The teaching will stay with you better and you will have a holistic understanding of what God wants you to know. These men and women were already dressed and they looked just like people. 
but they were not. And what the Lord put into my heart is celestial. Here's how it goes. They sit here empty and they wait to be needed. So when one of them is needed, then this empty shell will be taken off the assembly line and the tube from the mouth and the tube from the head will be removed. It will then be woken up and a consciousness, meaning a personality, making it Betty or Bob will be loaded onto that doll. And then they will give it time to grow hair. They will also give it time to process the, the software that has been put into them so that they can have at least a working knowledge of what it means to be human. There's a distinct difference between being human and doing all the things that we do instinctively, laughing at a joke, getting angry if it requires it, or needing sleep and food. We don't think, at what time shall I feed? At what time should I sleep? We don't think about the mechanisms that make us human. We just are. But these creatures that I saw would need time to go through the software that has been uploaded on them so that they can get used to the concept of a human and then also get used to being part of the concept of being human. And they have to get time to walk around, get used to walking, get used to talking until they're finally ready. And then they let them go out the door and live with real people. Except that they look so real that once they're in the population, no one will ever know that there's nothing human inside that shell, that it only has hollow space, microchips, and uploaded brainware. And the Lord said to me again, hollowed out plasticine robotoid people, empty shells, no wires, full of hardware, metal chips, not people. And I tried to say, wait, because I'd just woken up. So I was trying to get my bearings, but before I could even ask anything, the vision shifted and I found myself in a New York City train station. I've shared that when it comes to these beings that are not people, many times, sometimes the Lord will simply let me know Celeste, you'll just be aware of where you are, where you're living and what's around you. And the way he does this is I'll go out and I'll have a perfectly normal day. If it's a day that I need to work from home, then if I step outside, it's things that I need to do. But if I'm outside for the day, it's just a normal day. And when I come back in sleep, the father will replay that day to me. The only difference between the actual day I've had and the day I'm dreaming is that the people in the day I've had reappear in the dream, but they are noticeably different. They look like snakes. They look like lizards. They look scaly. Sometimes they look like full metal. So I've had dreams where I've seen people in my favorite grocers, but they are made of metal. They have this dull gray, black iron skin, and they are chiseled just like Robocop. Some of them I've shared look like Iron Man with the glowing eyes that Iron Man has, and God even has them in the superhero blue and gold body. I think Iron Man's body is blue and gold. And I see humanity replicated as metallic beings, iron beings, or I see them appearing as snakes, or I see them appearing as serpents, scorpions, and just things that are not people. And the Lord is letting me know that you live in the midst of them. You live in the midst of them. They are actually around you. And as you pass by, because of my love, my covering grace, you're not even aware of what sit next, sits next to you on the, on the average day on the New York City subway. And so he first showed me these creatures, um, these beings, they could be clones or they could be just some kind of synthetic creature that has been made on basically life support. And then before I could take that in, he switched it and I was on New York City, New York City's Metro line. And I was surrounded by people who were not human and they were glitching like crazy. So in this vision I had, I stood on the train platform and the train showed up and I got on. I sat down, I made myself comfortable, we pulled off. After a couple of stops, I noticed that 
people were very uncomfortable. Some people in that train car were extremely uncomfortable. And I realized that they were uncomfortable because of me. What the Lord showed me is that a very high pitched signal that was shaped like the Wi-Fi signal. Now, you know, the Wi-Fi signal is like this, and then it has little rings in it. A very high pitched signal shaped like the Wi-Fi signal was coming out of me. It was emitting a high pitched sound that was not immediately audible. And that sound was the name of Jesus. So the sound coming out of me was Jesus. And as the Lord showed me later that I will explain that sound that was coming out of me, the presence of God covered about 75% of the box train car that I was in. And wherever human beings were sitting, they did not care. They were on their Kindles. They were on their Beats by Dre. They didn't care. They were on headphones. They were reading. They were just relaxing. They didn't feel my presence in any way. But these non-human people were excuse me, please, extremely sensitive to my presence. And if I can explain it, this is how it went. I got in and I sat down and this signal was coming out of me and I didn't know at first. And then I noticed that people were uncomfortable and they were glitching and their skin was changing. So their skin began to show splotches of dark green scales their skin began to show splotches of black scales like a serpent. Their skin began to show the silvery um, rainbow colored skin or covering that a fish has. And I was watching these people flush. This was a flush that was coming up into the body starting in the neck. So whatever part of the neck is visible, this flush would rise up the neck sometimes it would show up on a cheek or on a patch a whole the whole forehead and then just as suddenly it would go away so some people were doing this like that creature mystique in the x men where it comes and then but with some it just rose up suddenly in the neck or the face and then it went away i saw rainbow colored fish scales deep green lizard scales on the neck and some people had this rubbery tightly knit black snake skin on the neck and coming out of me was not only this wi-fi signal that was emitting the word jesus but a bright golden light and when it hit humans they did not notice or care. But whenever it touched these others, they began to seriously glitch. And how their glitch was, it wasn't only their skin giving them away, they became extremely discomfited. They were bouncing their leg. Some of them were visibly wringing their hands. Now we know you wring your hands when you are extremely agitated or even when you're in deep grief. They were wringing their hands and it was like they wanted to flee the car, but they could not. They were just sitting there. And so I saw fish skin, snake skin, a lizard skin popping on and off cheeks, foreheads, and the necks of certain men and women in the car with me. It happened to people in business suits, but it also happened to people in ordinary clothing. And I didn't know if these people were aware of it, but I was staring in fascination and I thought, wow, God, look at this. This is not real people. These are other things in a human shell looking like people. But whenever the presence of God comes around them, they're unable to maintain the spiritual wall that they create to make us see them as people. And their real self just shines through. And when I thought this, the Lord changed the view and it became an aerial view. So I was now looking down into the train car as if God would be looking down into the train car. And I saw myself like a little dot at the center of this outgoing Wi-Fi signal with this golden light coming out of me, which was emitting the name Jesus. And these people um, were extremely, extremely, extremely discomfited. And the Lord said to me, serpents among men, false humans, Serpents mixed with human flesh, not people. And so I've shared that by now, if you are not new to this channel, then you know that 
the master's voice is a place that I bring forth the prophetic warnings of God. And we have to understand, please, that we are heading into the final times. After these times, there shall be no times. If you watched my introduction video, then you already know how I came into this knowledge is that I was deep in prayer because I needed God to do something really big for me, and it was way outside my budget. It was a huge shift and transition in my life that I needed, and I was praying with all my heart, and the Lord said to me, these are the last days, and it was like I heard him, okay, Father, and I kept praying, and he said to me, Celestial, these are the last days, and I kept praying. I heard the voice, but I kept praying because this issue was important, and the Lord said, these are the last days of the last days, after these days, there shall be no more days. And that stopped me in my tracks because I understand about the last days. I know that there's a Daniel who talked about these things. I know that there's an apostle Paul who spent all his life preaching to the church in a very urgent and a very present way to make the people of even the ancient church, the old church, the first church, Paul preached to them as if the coming of the Lord was then. He was such a present minded servant of the Lord saying, waste not one moment on frivolities for soon our Lord cometh. The reason that Paul's writings seem so fresh, even to the modern writer is because Paul believed in his heart that the Jesus who knocked him off his donkey was coming back very soon. And so his teachings about the end times, few though they are, carry an urgency that actually it's the fault of the church that that urgency has been lost. It is not the fault of the ancient writers like Apostle James and Apostle, I think it was Jude, who wrote about the fallen angels being held in chains for breaking their, breaking their first estate and that they would be released and then be ju judged. It is not John the Revelator's fault that he wrote all these things and the church just became laid back and lackadaisical. The men who wrote these things wrote them as if they cometh now. But in this generation, the generation upon whom they now cometh, we have no belief in us, barely, to believe that these things can happen because we have been taught of God, a.k.a. Santa, the wish granter, who would never release zombies and all the wickedness of Satan upon us. And yet Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says, trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And so I always say in my writings, when I'm sharing the Lord's word and I'm teaching around what he has said, is that who has spent an afternoon or perhaps an entire weekend getting lost in thought about what Satan is capable of? We look at the state of the world today and we look at the heinous crimes that humanity commits one against another because of the wickedness of Satan that has, rise, that has risen up in us. And I wonder, do we think that the wickedness we have seen, such as human trafficking, such as raping people on trains now, do we really think that that is the height of what Satan can do? When the Bible says all the power of the enemy, look at all the wondrous things that God has created. And Satan, the fallen, wicked cherub that imitates, do we really think that he does not have a plethora of things that he has created that are under his power, which is what Jesus warned about when he said all the power of the enemy? The devil surely has his cohorts. He certainly has the people and the beings that he has made and that he commands, and these things shall come upon the earth in the last days. And therefore it is necessary for God's church to have the same present understanding and urgency as the first church. And so I will share that God says that we are not down here alone, that we are not only up against heavy hitters like the fallen angels. No, that's not the only thing we're watching for. It's not just the Nephilim. It's all the wicked inventions that Satan has made that have been living down here with us for decades and centuries. Now, if you marry or befriend or procreate with the fish people and the serpent people, then are you not going to first be their prey when they reveal themselves? And also, won't you become a part of the ancient Nephilim birthing chain without even knowing it? 
This is a second prophecy that I incorporated into this one, and it's called Things the Lord Showed in Prayer. This is almost exactly a year before June the 2nd, 2020. I was praying to God at 5 a.m. in the morning, and afterwards, he started to talk to me about things that had nothing to do with what I was praying about, as is his habit. He spoke about peculiar characteristics that will be seen in the human population. The Lord has been teaching me about these things and telling me, Celestial, you need to watch out for this and watch out for that. When you see it, it's not just a genetic anomaly. It's actually evidence of these creatures mingling in that person's blood pool at some point along the timeline. This time, what he talked to me about was webbed digits. He said that there are people here on earth who have webbed hands and feet, meaning that they do not have five separate fingers and toes, as you see me displaying here, but that they are distinct in that their fingers and toes have webbed webs. Now, web digits are only found in the amphibian world. So we're looking at the open water dwellers and members of the water kingdom. So you have the ducks and the frogs and water birds with wet webbed feet. And then you even have creatures that have fur like otters and weasels and beavers who also have webbed hands and feet. The point is that such markers are never supposed to show up among people. People are not supposed to be manifestly scaly as well. So he said that some of them won't have the obvious stretchy and delicate webbing that you find between the toes of a duck or a frog. What you'll just see is perhaps too much flesh in this area. So instead of having the groove that we have, he said you will see a higher than normal wall of flesh in between the fingers. And he said that some of some people will actually have these proper webs that is the delicate transparent flesh joining their fingers and toes. Either these people are the real thing, meaning that they are the actual satanic entity itself, or they are manifesting the gene that shows that other beings have tampered with their family line. Now, I will just go ahead and say this and be honest. If we have come this far in the master's voice, or even if this is your first video, and I cannot say freely that human beings have been contaminated with these Nephilim, then I am doing the Lord a disservice because the prophetic words that he has given me clearly show the opposite, that these creatures are not new to mingling with people. They mingle people in how they ab abduct people from this earth and they tamper with their recreate their reproductive systems they tamper with their sperm and they tamper with their ova and they do all kinds of things and they blend themselves with man and sometimes put those blends back in the human being or they keep them by themselves they are very interested in human reproduction and god has shown that the at least with aliens the encroachment of what they do on human beings really affects human beings at a deep psychological level. And this is because they tend to put people to sleep and do things to people, such as conduct experiments on them. The Lord showed me um, a man who had been cut open and he was fast asleep and his entire digestive system, both the small and the large intestine, had been taken out and laid out in perfect biological formation on a table. And these creatures, were studying it to see how it worked and this man was sleeping and then they would take all his guts and put them back in and seal up the joint and when this man wakes up and comes back to real life he will be able to feel at a psychological even a spiritual level that something major and huge has happened to me but because his mind was affected and the memory of the truth also affected. He would be in the horrible position of walking around with the soul and spirit telling him great harm has been done to us. Great wrong has been done to us, but the mind cannot recall the information. And God showed me that it, it causes such painful emotional turmoil inside of people. They're fretful and they're worried and they're upset and they don't know at what, and they can live their lives possibly in that condition unless something happens to jolt the truth from the deep place or unless they find out or unless perhaps the Lord himself reveals it to us. And so these various markers are not supposed to show up among people, but the Nephilim and Satan have been tampering with the human bloodline for a 
long time. And so there are many different manifestations of what the serpent that is Satan has done. I even would like to take this moment to say that in Christianity, when you have the scripture before you and you don't love it and you want to rise above God's own word and God's own account of the truth to prove that you have a higher truth and you know better because you've been reading the rabbinical writings and you've been reading the Talmud and this and that, you do yourself a disservice and you are going to contaminate the wellspring of scripture in you. So this group that is walking around talking about that Cain is the seed of the serpent and Cain is the father of the, the scripture clearly says that Adam knew his wife. She conceived, she brought forth a male child and she named the boy Cain and said, I have received a man from the Lord. So right there in the Bible, father's name is given, mother's name is given, son's name is given. But then somehow out of this simple sentence, there is an entire sect of Christianity that is going around and claiming, oh no, Cain is the father of the serpent people. No, The serpent people know their father. The serpent people far outlasted Cain who just got old and and died. But the serpent people have been ruling in many parts of the world. In fact, in Hindu mythology, I finally got the right name for it. And it's actually the Naga. The Naga are serpent people who are highly venerated in Indian society. And the word Naga, actually, one of its meanings is wonderful So I've taught on the master's voice that if you study the Bible, or even study facts and research one dimensionally, you're doing yourself a disservice. When something is said to be wonderful, that doesn't automatically mean that it's good. The power of an exploding volcano, the power of a tsunami is also wonderful because it simply means to cause to wonder. So these Naga were extremely secretive, extremely powerful beings that can manifest as all human, as human on top and snake at the bottom, or fully as upright serpents. They had the ability to do this. And I've shared many times that when these creatures come into contact or came into contact with early man, The manifestation of their gifts and abilities and skills would surely have amazed humanity of that time. It does not mean that humanity of that time were fools. It simply means that humanity confronted with them that can fly and them that can heal themselves and them that live for 700 to 2,000 years among the people and remain looking like a 21-year-old boy are considered wonderful. The Lord gave me a dream, and that dream is shared in another message. I think it's called transhumanism and something else. If you put the word transhumanism into the search box, you'll find it. In that dream, it was just as simple as this dream of being on the train. I've shared that God will simply use my daily life and show me stuff. In that dream, it wasn't so deep. I was simply walking down the street. I was walking down the street and people were passing me on the left and the right. The only thing different about this dream is that I'm walking down the street celestial and on the left and the right, as people pass, the majority of the people passing me here in New York City were upright serpents or upright reptiles or upright lizards or things like that. And they were so many that I made this face of, almost a face of fainting, almost a face of God, this can't be real. How can there be so many of them and so few of us? The majority of the people who were passing me were other beings. They had a head and sometimes from the head on down, I saw the smooth underbelly of a snake. If a snake is coming towards me, the belly will be showing, not the back markings. So they had a head and they had two arms. It was winter. I had this dream very recently, perhaps just towards the end of last year. And I'm in my coat and it wasn't a day that was so cold that we would zip up the coat. So the coat was open and they're in their coats and the coats are open. But on both sides are passing me 
On both sides are passing me the smooth underbelly of a snake and then it goes down into the pants and then I see legs or it goes down into the skirt and then I see a person walking but God is showing me, look at this part, this is a serpent or look at this part, this part is like a frog. And then sometimes I saw a head and then arms and then the entire body from here down was a snake and these people are going past upright past me and sometimes it was a reptile walking past and it was just so many of them that in the dream in that dream I had I really despaired I despaired of seeing them and so the Lord said that those with scales on the body people who have scales under their skin some of the scales are very closely interlocked. They are shaped like the letter U and they interlock one into the other in a very tight fashion, just like snake skin. And when the, st when the scales are tightly meshed together, they form a waterproof barrier on the bodies of these serpent and water people. So one of the first times I ever saw this, um, it was a vision and it was a man, just a naked man. Uh, it was a picture of a lake and I saw the man from the back and here's the lake and then there were trees ringing the, the entire right side of the lake. And I saw this man from the back walking to the water and he walked up to the water. And then, you know, when you walk up to water, you will walk up to it until a certain level and then you will begin to swim in it, keeping your head above water. This man walked up to the water and went under the water. And as he was walking up to the water, his normal skin was going away. And what was surfacing, as I will explain in a minute, what was surfacing was these tightly interlocking scales. And he went into the water and began to walk along the bottom of the lake without being bothered. And the Lord zoomed in on the arm of this man and I got to see this interlocking scales very close up, exactly the way little children draw the, the scales of fish, all those little U's. And I saw sitting on the surface of the scales, the, the tiny, tiny bubbles that you get when something is airtight. You know, the air bubbles will try to, will form outside an airtight thing, but they're not able, because water can't get in, the bubbles just form outside to show this thing is an airtight lock. So this man was able to walk along the bottom of the lake with no problem, no need to worry about going up there. And the Lord told me that when they walk there, those little air bubbles that form on the edge of the skin can actually eventually get so many that they will form a big pocket of air around that person. And the person can draw air from that outer outer coating almost of the air pocket and not worry about needing air for a very long time. So all of this, this falls under the prophecy from the mouth of our King, Jesus Christ, when he said in the days, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be again. In the days of Noah, it was not just about a big boat building project. It was about the fact that the boat building project needed to take place because the earth had become corrupted with every single thing that God had not created. Human women, women mating with fallen angels and bringing forth great giants and then also genetic experiments of the devil that brought forth monsters that because of their partly angelic nature or because of their satanic origin did not die. Many of these creatures, if you look through the mythologies of the nations, were the first kings, the first people who basically started to rule among men and command humanity to serve them almost as scales. And so with the Lord speaking of these scales, he said that the scales can sink deep into the skin so that they're not visible in the flesh at all. But at times due to external factors such as anger, when they become angry, it becomes harder for them to hold their shape. So when they are frustrated or very angry or under a lot of stress, this is when the scales, as I said in the vision that I saw, begin to manifest on the face or the cheek, or it might just be the entire face change for just a while. Their eyes change. They're basically not able to hold the shape that they are and then you can perhaps see what they are not that you would want to and also when they are uncomfortable their scales rise to the surface so what I saw sometimes the Lord will just zoom in to show me what he's talking about what I saw is that 
one of them was very hot. One of these serpent people were, was very hot. I don't think snakes do too well in heat. They get sluggish and very unhappy if the temperature is too hot for them. And this man was so hot that his scales just came up the way a hippo comes up from the water and then perhaps goes back down. His scales involuntarily rose out of his flesh and then he got control of himself again and they went back down. The next thing I saw, this is all from the June 2, 2020 vision and teaching. When the Lord is teaching me, there are lots of pictures to see. I saw a man that was swimming in a pool in great happiness, just the way you might imagine how happy a pet fish would be if you buy it out of a crowded pet store where it has to share the tank with all the different fishes and you take your little fish home and you put that little guy in his own tank just the way he would be swimming around and moving his tail and whirling in little circles i saw a human being doing this this man was doing the kind of tricks and turns that you usually expect to see from a very young seal he was so agile in the water and then he came out of the water and he shook his hair and shook the water out of his hair and he looked right at me course he wasn't looking at me he was just looking and I was sitting up in bed looking at him through a camera perspective and this man's skin was iridescent basically he looked like a very big silver fish no human skin of any race is iridescent because the best that skin can do is when you oil it then we glow but we cannot reflect life light because we are matte we are not made of anything that is reflective but this man had a rainbow gleam coming off his entire body and i just sat there looking at him shimmering in red and gold and blue and yellow and purple and i just looked there wasn't anything to say. And so here are the main points that God would like us to know. Not every prophecy that the Lord has to bring is going to relate to natural things, governments and wars and famines and things like that. These things have always been a part of human history and there's a place for them. But as Christians, we should know that our faith is a supernatural exercise. If we see ourselves following a God that we can't see, whose power we can't see is given to us to fight enemies that we can't see, then we need to be a little bit wiser than we are now. Prophecy is transcendent, meaning that occasionally it will rise into the realm where it covers things that we may not have heard before, or it covers things that we do not have any precedent for or filter for. That doesn't make it untrue. It makes it new, and yet all of it relates back to the Bible. If the Bible says as it was in the days of Noah, then when I speak about Nephilim and the undead coming here, the undead were a part of the ancient world. They have rituals to raise the dead and walk about in those secret Egyptian books. That is why people are so interested in those ancient religions, because they were doing all the things that I'm sharing here, according to the Lord's wisdom and revelation. Also, Satan is extremely wicked and extremely hardworking. He's always on the job finding new ways to try and break through the covering fence of God's word God's love and God's protection over his people. And one of the ways that Satan will get disobedient people is that they will not want to stay within the parameters of God's protection. They will, being children of disobedience, try to go against the warnings and protection that God has set in place. And Satan will simply send to humanity demonic things and packaging that men and women cannot exist, resist. And one of the things that men and women cannot resist because they are disobedient and they break the laws of God is sex. People use sex to sell yogurt now. I have no idea what yogurt and breakfast food and sexual activity have to do with one another, but our society is so lewd and so licentious now that the things that they have on TV, apparently marketing breakfast cereal and things like that just are beyond the pale. So because human beings do not keep God's laws of chastity and moral purity and staying away from sexual immorality until you are in a lawful marriage, when Satan brings demonic things and packaging that people can't exist, they will just find themselves joining with these things and bringing forth new little hybrids that will then go out into the world and marry the sons and daughters of unsuspecting people who don't pray, don't know God, and think that everything that I say on this channel is just 
nonsense. So the Lord says that Satan has tried and tested methods of deception and lies and infiltration and trickery. And here is what infiltration means. To infiltrate means to mingle, to join with, and to blend with until you can't tell the difference. And Daniel the prophet warned that this would happen in the last days. And they shall mingle with the seed of men, but they shall not be able to cleave to them. Just as iron does not cleave to clay, so they will not be able to cleave to us. And this is speaking of a demonic infiltration into the us. Because if you look at the text, it's pretty simple. It says, and they shall mingle with the seed of men. If you take the seed of men, you're talking about every man, woman, and child on this planet. So you've always already captured all the true human flesh and blood and put them under one set that is called the seed of men. Once you have this set called the seed of men, you're talking about all humanity. Who then is they? Has anybody spoken to you in your Bible group or church lately, especially if you're new to this, about who they can be? They are the fallen angels. They are the wolf men that are walking around changing once a weekend when the moon is full and just looking a little hairier and very Latin for the rest of the time. No offense to Latin men. They are anything like these creatures with the the clones or the synthetics with the pump on their heads and the pump in their mouth, keeping them alive until they're prepared and dressed up and they come out into the suit and it's Jared in accounting and you can't wait to ask him on a date, not knowing that Jared can't wait to infiltrate you with something. The Lord had said that they're hybrids that are just empty, they're just microware and chips, but he has also told me, Celestial, there are types that can do everything a man can do. They can make you pregnant, they can live with you for 40 years and laugh with you in what looks like a happy marriage. Because, here is a thought, the Lord has said to the nation of America that Russians are here already, that they have infiltrated this nation in every conceivable layer, from the government, to the movie stars, to the sports stars, to the ordinary old living lady living next to you. And they don't have accents. He said that they are more American than Americans. So if human beings, who have an end game to bring down an enemy that has always frustrated and angered them. If human beings can be carefully playing an end game for I don't know how long before the Lord raised me up to speak of these things, then Satan, who will not die until lake of fire time, how long do you think he has been breeding his silent army and having them intermarry into the population and say, stay with them? because the day cometh when we will reveal ourselves, and then Jesus' words will be found to be true. Luke 20, 21 and 26, men's hearts failing them for looking upon the things that shall come upon this world. Not all of it will be because there are bombs going off and wars being fought. Some of it will just be finding out that a partner of a lifetime wasn't even a person to begin with. As iron does not cleave to clay, so they will not be able to cleave to man. So I think that's a fair assessment of the facts and a good revelation of the Lord's truth. Stay under the shadowing cover of the Lord. Thank you. I am celestial. And thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for sharing these videos. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Thank you if you're subscribed. Thank you if you are a supporter of this channel. I used to be able to send individual thank you emails, but that is now gone with the wind. There are a lot of people and I'm barely able to get through the mail that I do get. So I always say my thank yous here. God bless you as you support this channel. I pray that the Lord will return your gift to you in multiples. Let us stay in prayer and let us stay sober and let us take the word, the Lord's words to heart. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.